More than 50 independent nations, nearly two and a half billion people. The Commonwealth was an institution to which the Queen was devoted. I want to show that the crown is not merely an abstract symbol of our unity, but a personal and living bond between you and me. In 1953, she embarked on a six-month tour that took her from the Caribbean to the South Sea Islands. Uganda, Sri Lanka, then known as Ceylon, Australia, where three quarters of its people turned out to see her, and New Zealand, from where she sent a Christmas radio message with a vision for the future. The Commonwealth bears no resemblance to the empires of the past. It is an entirely new conception, built on the highest qualities of the spirit of man. To that new conception of an equal partnership of nations and races, I shall give myself heart and soul every day of my life. A few months earlier, Elizabeth had been crowned, but unlike her father, there was no mention of empire in the coronation oath. Will you solemnly promise and swear to govern the people of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Union of South Africa, Pakistan, and Ceylon. The empire was dying, the Commonwealth taking its place, and it was to that association of equals she was committing herself. I solemnly promise so to do. Flowers for the sovereign of this new African state. Countries that were still colonies began to peel away. In 1961, Sierra Leone became independent. A dozen more in Africa, including Nigeria and Kenya, followed. Many of these independent states preserved their links as members of the Commonwealth, but two did not. The Union of South Africa has withdrawn from the British family of nations. The Union of South Africa was expelled in 1961 over apartheid. Racist minority rule was offensive, but many found the separation painful. May the Union abandon apartheid and South Africa return to the British Commonwealth. Four years later, the colonial rulers of Rhodesia declared independence. The watchword of the Africans is one man, one vote. Determined to prevent a black majority. They wanted the Queen to continue as head of state, but she refused. At the 1979 summit of Commonwealth leaders in Zambia, there was suspicion the British government wanted to recognize Rhodesia. Her Majesty insisted on attending, despite security advice. You've had a very busy day, haven't you? She saw each leader privately in turn, helping to hold a fractious meeting together. The conference ended with an unequivocal declaration that apartheid was an affront to humanity. International pressure led to Rhodesia becoming independent Zimbabwe. And eventually to the site of the Royal Yacht Britannia in Cape Town Harbour. In 1995, the Queen was welcomed by President Nelson Mandela to a new South Africa. Its new anthem signalled that a deep wound had been healed. The events in South Africa of the last few years have helped to bring rays of sunshine to pierce the mist. May the sun shine ever brighter. Nkosi Sikoleli e Africa. Commonwealth pressure had helped bring it about, and the Queen's experience and diplomacy played a significant role. Somebody asked me had I been to Africa before, and I did say that I had been everywhere in the Commonwealth in Africa and in other countries in Africa. I think I've seen more of Africa than almost anybody. <laughs> The Commonwealth still faces challenges. There are disagreements over issues like human rights and same-sex relations. In 2018, the Queen was granted her wish that the new King would lead it in her stead. It is my sincere wish that the Commonwealth will continue to offer stability, 
and continuity for future generations, and will decide that one day the Prince of Wales should carry on the important work. Seven decades ago, she may have received the imperial crown and had her carriage escorted by the armed forces of a former empire, but it was as head of a commonwealth of independent nations that she reigned. Her Majesty visited almost every one of its member states, many of them repeatedly. She may only have made it as far as the tiny Western Pacific atolls of Tuvalu once, but that visit by their queen is now firmly woven into the island's history. For 70 years, the fortunes of the Commonwealth were shaped by an affection and respect for the queen, whose long life was so closely entwined with its peoples. <laughs>